Hi guys! Welcome to We're Not Starving. Today I will be chatting with Bianca Castronovo. She is an actress here based in LA. I met her in my acting class at Stan Kirch and I'm really pumped to chat with her. So why don't we connect on in with her? Bam! Hi Bianca! Hi Grace! How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, I'm really pumped you were able to chat with me today. Me too, I'm excited. So do you want to tell people a little bit about you? Sure. Uh, I am 23. I grew up in New Jersey and studied a little in New Jersey, but did like the bulk of my acting training in New York um, for like three years, I think. Um, I didn't live in New York. I just kind of traveled back and forth. And then at the end of 2015, I moved to LA. So it's almost my three year anniversary. Oh, yay, um, congrats. Thanks. And, um, yeah, I've been here ever since. Love it. Would never go back. And, yeah. Amazing. So, what do you, um, what's your schedule like in, in L.A.? Um, well, it changes because, I mean, you know, we're actors, so every week is different depending on how many auditions you get or whatever. But for the most part, I work two to three days a week, um, at my survival job, and then I have class like once a week, and then I'll do workshops here and there, but it's pretty open, and I like that. I like that I have, like, nothing set in stone. Do you often have to switch your schedule around for auditions, or is it the way you've set it up? Are you able to kind of just make time for auditions naturally? Um, For the most part, um. It's just naturally. I mean, I only work one weekday and one weekend, and most of the time auditions are during the week. Mm -hmm. And I work at a breakfast place, so I'm done pretty early. Luckily, it's like a really good deal. So for the most part, I don't have to switch anything around. And if I do, um, the reason why I keep I have kept my job for so long is because the girls I work with are so flexible. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important if you're going to be out here for acting. You don't want to get stuck working all the time. Yeah, I think having people that are willing to switch around with you and are understanding of your schedule is so important. But luckily in L.A., it's a pretty common thing. It's so common because every, most of the girls I work with, none of them are, like, career servers. Like, mm -hmm. makeup artists and people who are, do hosting or other actors or dancers. So everyone's really understanding and will, like, hop in and do a favor. If, like, I'm like, hey, I have an audition. Or, like, hey, I have a shoot. Can you work for me? And, We'll switch days so nobody loses hours because everyone knows that money is tight. So it's a good deal. Did you do you do a lot of print work too to supplement your income? Um, I mean, I do. I try to. I just signed with a um, print agency, so I'm hoping that that will pick up because mm -hmm. that would be great. Um, it's very, um, it's very seldom that I get to do print work. When I do, it's really fun. But it's not as frequent as I would like it to be. Yeah, doing some print and commercial work, it's it's a good way to supplement your income so you're not as based on serving. Oh, yeah. Did you start in modeling or did you start with acting? Um, I started with acting. And what got you into acting? <laughs> um, I always wanted to do it, but I was always scared. And my sister, my older sister is a singer. And my little brother is a dancer. So I kind of just always help them with their stuff to just, and just like shove my stuff under the rug because I was like so scared to try anything, you know? Um, and then I don't know what happened. I was, I remember being on vacation in the Poconos with my girlfriends and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to take an acting class when I get back home. And I like wrote out like this script and like, I was like, 17 or 16 and called this like studio in New York and I was like hi um I want to take an acting class I can't come take your class um and I was like shitting myself and then so I did that class for I went to like an audit and I was like this is crazy it was like everyone else was like 40 um but I liked it I didn't like that one but I knew that I liked it so I found a class that was kind of close to home in New Jersey and I just like loved it because it was not that I'm good at everything, but it was the first thing I tried that I was like, Oh my gosh, like possibilities are endless. Like there's no rhyme or like reason. It's not like baking or like dancing or, I mean, I guess it is kind of similar, but, 
but I just, it was just something like I never experienced before. So I was just like, I just want to see where this goes. And then I just kept taking classes and all of that from there. And then print work kind of fell in behind that. Like agents would be like, Oh, Hey, I have this. Do you want to go? And I'd be like, sure. Extra money. Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been, obviously Bianca has amazing hair. You can see it right here, but <laughs> has that been, um, a big selling point, like especially commercially or sorry, like print work wise. Um, at the beginning it wasn't like the past couple of years, curly hair, like main, in the mainstream has become more of a thing. Like when I first started, I remember like managers was like, Oh, we'll sign you, but can you straighten your hair? Mm. Like it was never a good thing and I never really liked it, but natural hair has kind of popped up the last couple of years. So the first really big print thing I did was with Diva Curl, just a curly hair company. Um, and so now I, I notice a lot more people are like, Oh, your hair is so awesome. Like I just signed with a commercial agent as well. And they're like, your hair is so great. Like you can be doing like all these commercials for Pantene and whatever for this and that. But like five plus years ago, hair commercials were people with the long, luscious straight hair. It was never curly. Mm, so that's a good point. the culture has kind of changed in a good way for me at least. Mm -hmm. I know. I realized that on a, the We're Not Starving Instagram, we I posted a photo with you, one of your few straight-haired photos, just based on, like, the way the color scheme was working on the gram. So I was like, I didn't get Bianca with her curly hair. <laughs> I didn't have any with an orange background. Um, but that, that picture's a little old because I really I don't straighten my hair that much because since working with you, Curl, like, I've learned so much and how bad I used to treat my hair, so... I only straighten it if I really need to for like a job or something. Mm -hmm. I've embraced it more and I'd rather have healthy hair than. And I think it's interesting how different it changes your look. Um, cause you honestly almost look like a different person with straight hair. It's, it's so weird. I had to straighten it like a little over a year ago for a print job and I was like dreading it. I didn't want to straighten my hair at all. Um, cause I didn't want the damage, but. The pictures came out really good, but I sent one to my mom, and she's like, oh, who's that? And I was like, me! It's your daughter. <laughs> but it really does. I, I don't know why. It looks so... I think that's why I don't like doing it so much anymore, either, because I don't feel like myself. I feel, like, smaller. Yeah, it, it is interesting. I don't know. I guess it's hair and eyebrows. They just, like, change your whole face and look. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They're very important. So when did you realize you wanted to do acting professionally? You kind of talked about how you found acting, but when did you realize this was the job you wanted to have? I don't know if there was, I don't know if there was like a, like a really specific moment that I can think of. Um, a big, a big moment was I started going to this class in New York. At, it's called McCaskill Studios. And my teacher, Rob, just, like, completely changed my life. But the first class I went to audit, um, this girl, Brianna Marin, who's an actress that I know. She actually lives above me now. I got her in my apartment building from New York. Isn't that crazy? That's wild. So wild. But the first class I was auditing, she was doing this, working on an audition for something. And she's, like, she's a little older than me, so she's, like, an experienced working actor. And I was just, like, so blown away. I remember just being, like, oh, my gosh, I can't go to this class, like, I can't, I can't like do that. Like what? So I think that was a big moment that I always think of that like kind of always re-inspires me. And that was a, a moment where I was like, Oh my gosh, like I want to be that good so I can do what she's doing. That's so crazy. Does she know this story? I'm obsessed with her. I tell her all the time. <laughs> so I'm like, you live in my building now just so I could stalk you because I really do. She's like my, one of my favorite actors. Do you have um, other actors that are a little further away from home uh, more, that inspire you as well that you've like, really look, looked up to? That I don't know? Yeah, like uh, an, like if, uh, Meryl Streep, Julia Roberts. Right, like celebrity. Uh, Saoirse Ronan is like mm. my favorite. I love her. She's um, so talented. She's so good. And she's so young. And she started when she was so young. Like, it just blows my mind. Um, her, a lot of, I really like a lot of the younger people just because they're my age. So they kind of inspire me and like blow me away. I'm like, how are you that good? Like, how, like, that's what I want to be. I want to, I just look up to them so much. Like, Sir Sharon, 
uh, Dakota and Elle Fanning. I like, I don't know what the water that in their house is, but I love them. Um, and obviously like Meryl Streep and all the, all the good ones. Yeah. I mean, you, everything, every, every actor has to have Meryl on their, on their column of people they look up to. For sure. I will question you if you don't. <laughs> So what do you do in your off time to practice your craft or stay creative? What does that, that free time look like? Um, other, well, obviously acting class. That's, what we do. Yay. Um, that's a big thing. Like if I, if I'm not in a class consistently, I feel less productive. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, things outside of acting that I do to stay kind of like motivated and creative. Um, I really love to bake, mm -hmm. um, I don't know why. It's just like, I don't know what it is. I like grew up baking cookies and selling cookies at my parents' restaurant. So I think it's just like comfortable. And then like, I could just think easier. It's like, I don't know, like when you wash the dishes and you have, you just like think things because mm -hmm. you're occupied, you know? I've so had baking. The, I've had the same experience with baking or not baking, but, but cooking. There's something mm -hmm. I think about as artists having the ability to make something, even though it's not um, the same craft as, as we're pursuing. There's something I think inherent about we're artists and we love creation. And so cooking and baking is creating something and you have an exact result at the end of it. I think that's what's even more so, so satisfying is like if I bake something like, all right, in an hour I'm going to have like a, a cake that mm -hmm. I can eat. And in our career acting, it's like, it's kind of, hard to see those direct results so quick mm -hmm. it's usually like you know a whole like couple of years before you see like results that you want to see I mean obviously you'll see like a result in class or if you're rehearsing something and you feel like something instantaneous like that but that's why I like baking and I or I'll um embroider my boyfriend got me a like a starter kit for Christmas last year and like I spent like a week just like on the couch watching tv listening to podcasts like embroidering like so such a grandma but it's so it's just like monotonous and like calming and a lot of times if I'm stuck on something with acting like if I can't focus on a script or I'm not in the mood to like work on something for class I'll be like all right like let me just like I'll sit on the couch and embroider or something and then I'll get an idea and like want to go back to it or something like that so sometimes I used to just be like no stay here like you have to you have to work on this you have to figure it out and that would make me dread working on stuff for acting even more. So I think it's important that, like, you go away and come back and, like, let the creativity flow through, like, different channels, however that is. Yeah, it sounds like both those activities are super meditative for you, which then <laughs> naturally engages your creative mind rather than forcing it. Yeah, and a lot of times, I mean, you know, when you're studying a script, it sometimes it feels like you're kind of forcing it because you're reading words and you, you're like, okay, I want to have, like, what do I want to do here? And what do I want to do here? But with like baking, it's like, this is what you're going to do. And this is how it's going to come out. Yeah. I think having like a literal step by step is something that's so nice. <laughs> and, um, so when we were talking earlier before, um, today, you mentioned that you create these long plans. You have your 10 year plan that you then boil backwards. So can you explain that a little bit further? Sure. Um, so, I like, I'll start big and then come back. So I'll do like five or 10 years out. Like, where do I see myself in five or 10 years? Mm -hmm. um, I just did like a five year one. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll start with five years. Where do I want to be in five years? So like for me, it's, I want to be a sought after actress working in like supporting roles in film and recurring things on TV. So then I'll, okay, step down from that. What do I have to do in like by four years to get to that place in five years. Mm -hmm. So maybe year four, like I want to get like a couple jobs in films or in TV shows that I really like. Cool. Let's step it down from there. Year three. Like, uh, if I want to be doing multiple jobs in TV and film in year four, what do I do in year three? So it kind of just like breaks it down all the way like that. And then I'll come all the way down to year one. And then I'll be like, all right, what do I want to have done by the end of this year? So like by 12 31 2018 like the day before new year's i want to have booked just anything like a job whether it's print or tv or anything a commercial that's my goal for the next how many months of three three months of the year three or four that's my goal for 
that. And then I'll make, I'll just, you just have to really make sure that it makes sense and you're not being like ridiculous with your, I mean, obviously dream big, but I like to make sure that my, I have like attainable steps and I break it down in a way that doesn't like overwhelm me. Yeah. I mean, I think that's an amazing idea. Did you come to that yourself or did you read a book or did someone tell you to create this kind of life plan? My cousin Dana, she works with um, Kelly Williams, the real the realty office, and that whole company is very like goal oriented and like it's it's really really cool. So we were home for at Thanksgiving once, and she was like, "Hey, come over for dinner, and we're gonna have like a goal planning session." Um, so I went with my brother and my sister and my cousin, and she gave us these lists, which it's called a one three five. I think if you like Google it, you could probably find one and. It's um, your one main objective, your three strategies to achieve that objective, and your five tactics to reach each strategy. So it's kind of like a pyramid scheme. So I think that idea kind of gave me the idea to, like, let's do a pyramid scheme and, like, how what are all the things we need to do in all these bottom years to get to, like, the main goal in, like, five years or ten years from there, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, mm-hmm. It is a super smart strategy. Um, that, it is, and it's it was it was so helpful. It, I mean, it's just helpful. I think they say that when you write your goals down, they're more likely to come true. Or when you tell people, it's like you kind of feel like, oh shit, like people know I have to try. I really got to do it now. So I think that writing it down and having like you can visually see it, like your attainable steps and everything, I think is smart. And how did you come to some of your specific goals with acting? Because we've talked about this in class some, and you've actually inspired me a lot to some different actionable ways to get further in my career. How did you come across some of the steps you're doing right now? Um, like strategies and whatnot? Yeah. Um, a couple different ways. Um, being in class and like talking with people and hearing what other people are doing I think is really helpful. Um, I did a lot of online classes with Dallas Travers. She's kind of like a life coach, but specifically for actors. So she talks about um, ways that you can market yourself and think, little things like that that you could be doing to make yourself like more seen and heard. So that was really helpful. Um, but like I said, like my like here, for example, this is mine from my 135 list from 2016, and it's actually funny because I was reading it earlier, and my main objective was to get an agent, and I had gotten one shortly after I did this, but now I need one again, so I'm like, this is, I was reading it again, I'm like, wow, all these things are great, like, this is all stuff that I can be doing, so my three strategies were to study more and, you know, grow creatively, um, talk to more successful people, and market yourself, so now my strategy to get better, my five were study more, get better at memorization, take class, take yourself, write your own stuff, um, and keep your website up to date. So those are just like little things, but that makes such a huge difference. Like study more. Hello. Like it's so easy for actors not to do it because it's just easy not to like, Oh, unless I have an audition, I don't need to work on anything, but it's like, sports like you can't expect to be a good player at anything unless you practice every day like you have to build the muscle like of the muscle of memorization the mu- like your emotional muscle and like all of those things so I don't know I just try to think of things that would actually would help my strategies get even like like more tightened up mm-hmm. did I answer your question at all yeah, you totally did. I think that's so cool. Um, I love that you pulled it out. So you have like your, do you have a goal sheet for 2018 too? Um, I don't have a one, three, five. I just have my five year plan. Um, I should, I mean, the year's almost over now, but I should do, I should do one. And you said, um, you said people can Google it's a one, three, five plan. Yeah. I mean, this is from Keller Williams because that's what my, where my cousin works, but it's literally, this is, I don't think like this is copyright or anything. Like it's just 2016, 135, main business goal, three strategies, five tactics. And that's it. And then you just put your five tax tactics, five to three, five to three, five to three. That's it. You just like make it yourself one word. Yeah. It sounds like a really easy tool for people to create for themselves. Yeah, totally. 
yeah, this was, it was really helpful. And just pulling it out, like being able to look back and be like, okay, I'm, I did this all and I got like my main objective to get an agent, but now I don't have one again. So I'm like, I could, I'm just going to re- recycle. <laughs> So your next step right now um, in your career is to get a theatrical agent, right? Because you said you have commercial in print. Yeah. And um, I have a manager. But... And you have what? I have a manager, so she kind of covers me with a theatrical, but yeah, I want to get a good agent as well. And your manager is relatively newer, right? Wasn't that something you got this summer? My manager? No. I had. I actually got this manager before a couple months before I moved out here, like three years ago. Oh, wow. So, um, and you use some of the same strategies you've been discussing to get your manager or did you connect with her a different way? I connected with her by doing a workshop, which is kind of things that but is something I still do now. Um, I, there's this thing called one-on-one and they do in New York, they're in LA, they're called next level, but in New York they're called one-on-one. It's like the same company. And I was part of them in New York and they do this trip a couple times a year. It's called the LA trip and you pay like whatever, a lot of money to come out here for a week and every day you spend all day meeting with either like a bunch of different agents and a bunch of different managers or just um Dallas Travers was there like people uh, coaches and inspirational people and you kind of just do that for a week and then with the hopes of like maybe a manager will like you or maybe you'll make a connection with a casting director and or and basically just learn a bunch of stuff because you're not from LA so it was a good way to like get the lay of the land out here. Um, and I met my manager doing that and she like, so she reached out and then I signed with her like two months before I moved out. That's awesome. So they set up all the meetings for you. You didn't have to do the research. Um, like you didn't have to know who to meet with. They just set up all the meetings and you, did you sit down and just talk or did you perform monologues or scenes for them? Um, it was a little bit of both. Like there was every, there was a couple agent and manager showcases. So that was like, you just go in and show your work like one by one. And then there'd be a Q and a before or after. Um, but then some casting directors would come in and, and you would like, they do Q and a and it would uh, like a class format. Like you would perform and they'd give you notes and stuff like that. It was kind of like a little bit of everything, but they put it all together. That's what you're paying for. And you just come and take class like all day for a week. And did you get to rehearse with them, or was it more of, like, a final performance? Um, it was more of a final performance. Unless the class, unless it was specifically, like, they, some, some classes they would assign you something, like, two days before, and then they would coach you through it, like, like an active class. Okay, great. And you've been doing a lot of workshops in L.A. as well. You've continued doing them. Mm-hmm. My, um, Dallas Travers big fan she I did a coaching with her and one of her biggest notes for me well for everyone but for me especially was like trying to get FaceTime because she's like your pictures are great but sometimes it's like they can't capture your personality through a picture like as well as just talking to you and she's like and I'm I'm talking to you and I'm getting like something completely different than what I got from your picture so she was like for you I think it'd be really beneficial to have them meet you in person and get a vibe for your who you are. So I took that to heart and I was like, all right, I'm going to do a bunch of workshops. And another thing that she says is like, it takes six or seven times for someone who doesn't know you to remember you. Mm -hmm. If it's just like in a casual way, like, Oh, Hey, hi, I'm Bianca. Nice to meet you. Bye. It takes six times or seven times of that before someone remembers you. So I didn't want to just spend hundreds of dollars taking these random workshops. Like it would be helpful. I would learn a lot, but I wanted to make sure that it was more strategic and I wasn't just wasting my money. So I picked a casting office. I picked Telsey and co, which is like one of the big ones out here and in New York. And there's like a couple, five or, or five of the main casting directors. And I was like, all right, I want to meet with each of them six times this year. So that's six times five. It was a lot. It was a lot of workshops, <laughs> but some of them were three weeker. So I'm like, okay, three weeks. That's three. So I just need to do like another three week workshop with them. Um, and I kind of just finished that like a couple weeks ago. So I think workshops are so great, but you want to be smart about it. So you're not just kind of throwing all your money away. And now I know that that whole office knows me and they'll, they remember me because I kind of stalked them all year. <laughs> <laughs> and can you describe the difference between a workshop and an acting class? Yes. So a class is something that you pay for, um, and you're, you just have a teacher. It's like a really 
casual environment with like a bunch of peers. Um, and your teacher normally is like a fellow actor or they used to be an actor. Um, but a workshop is, they say it's like a class, but I think the smart thing to do is to treat it like an audition in the way that you don't want to go unprepared. Like sometimes in class it's like, okay, like I'll, I kind of know it, like it'll be great. Like I'll do good work and I'll get notes and work through it there. But with a workshop, like you want to go and bring your A game because even though they say it's a class setting, they're professionals and they're going to remember you and you want to put your best foot forward. So I think that's the main difference. Um, it's for me, it's more, it's a little more pressure. It's more of an audition thing than a class thing. But the vibe is very similar to class. Like you're performing in front of your peers and they're, they're really, really a good cast director. It's usually always like so nice and they give you great feedback. Um, and you learn a lot more about the industry from their point of view and every cast director is different. So like you learn what they like and what they don't like specifically. Like some casting directors are like, I don't need to slate. And others like you, you better slate. So I have like a notebook and I write down every workshop, like likes and dislikes. So if I have an audition for them, I can be like, Oh, they, they like when you do this. Let me make sure I do that. Um, so you kind of just get everyone's like, uh, you can cut through and like figure out what they like specifically. So I think that's the difference between classes and workshops. Yeah. That's um, just such a smart strategic way of looking at class and, and workshops. So you did mention that you feel the casting directors are pretty nice. I think there's like a lot of rumors and like grapevine of like what it's like to be an actor. So what has been, what has it been your experience working with casting directors? Are they nice? Are they mean? Do they make you feel comfortable? <laughs> well, in workshops, they're always very, very nice. And they say like all the time, and I say a good casting director, because a bad casting director is going to make you feel like crap and they're going to be rude because they're not good at their job and they're taking it out on you. But really, a good casting director, they need us to succeed just as much as we want to succeed because who they cast is a reflection of them and they, they want us to make them look good. So a good casting director is they're, they're sweet and they're nice and they're going to give you good notes and they're going to want you to feel comfortable. So, I mean, it's a hard thing for me. Like when I go on auditions, like I get so nervous because I know that they're, they, they're there for me and they have my back, but there's still like that part of you that's like, oh my gosh, like I have to impress them. And like, they're not going to like me. And even in, in workshops, some of them will say like, listen, if you just came in and read that for me, I wouldn't have given you that note. I would have just said, thank you and have a great day. But this is a class format and I want you to learn. So like, but I just want you to know that after this class, if you come in and I'm not as, you know, you know, oh, hey, like try this, do it this way. It's because we just don't have time. It's not because I didn't think you did great. Like, just like here, you just did great. But it's a it's a workshop, so um, they're able to work with you more. But it is a, always going to be like a little more. I don't want to say cold, but a little more cold in an audition than when you're talking with them on a workshop because now they're at work. Yeah, and it's a, it's a a job interview as opposed to a class setting. Exactly. Um, but they say don't look at it as a job interview. Like, come in and just do your best and that's how you have to think of it, which is hard. It's really hard to think of it like that, but they're all, they're there for you. They had, they, that's the thing that they try and say all the time. is like, we're nice and we want you to do good. So don't be nervous. Not that that helps me in any way, but <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything to help keep yourself nervous or to calm the nerves? Like, do you meditate? Do you do yoga or anything, any type of practice for that? I've tried everything. Um, I like to do yoga just for myself. I, I notice that I don't, I book things only when I'm like regular, regularly practicing yoga. So I think it does have something to do with like keeping me grounded and stuff, but it doesn't make me less nervous when I get to the audition. I'm still nervous. Like it keeps me grounded in general. But when I'm outside the room, like I still get just as nervous. Do you think that when you are performing, uh, when you're also practicing yoga, it gives you a groundedness that even though you're nervous, it's almost like you can forget it while you're performing and then it kind of comes back when you're done. Yeah, definitely. I think just just being more connected to like my breath mm -hmm. 
because uh, I'm I like I'm a very shallow breather. Like it's so sometimes at work, like I'll be like, oh my god, like <sighs> oh my gosh, why am I not breathing? And like I just don't take deep breaths at all. So when I'm regularly, if I do 30 minutes of yoga every day, like I'm literally getting more oxygen. So I'm literally more connected to myself and to my breath. So if I have an audition that day, like I, I'm already more connected to myself than I would be if I hadn't done yoga that day, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but I still get so, so nervous every time. I think something that's helped me a lot is preparation, which is something I learned from Stan Kirsch. Like, there's times I will go in and be like, I, I totally know this. Like I've like rehearsed it every which way. And I still, I'm so nervous that I will mess up. So being prepared, like to the beyond the point of preparation helps me a lot with my nerves because I know, like, I know this so well that there's no way in hell that I'm going to mess up. Mm -hmm. So that helps me a lot. But, um, even being very well prepared, if it's something scary, like, I will literally go numb. Like, my hands will go numb. I'm not, like, my hands will cramp up and, like, my face will go numb. Like, this, it just happened to me a couple weeks ago. I was doing a workshop, um, and it was, like, a kissing scene with this, like, this actor who's so great. Like, so great. It could have gone bad because it's a workshop, so you could have got, I could have got paired with someone, like, a little creepy or, you never know. You never know who's in these classes. I mean, but the guy I got paired with was, like, awesome. Um, and we had rehearsed it like a lot. Like I felt so good. I like coached with it and everything. And I was like, I'm not, I did everything that I could do to make, to make sure that I am not as nervous when I get there. And even with all of that preparation and feeling more confident about anything that I have ever performed in my life before, I was sitting in the chair and I had to sit on my hands because they were cramped like this because they went numb. I thought it was a blood sugar thing for a while. So like I'm, I used to make sure like I ate before, like I did everything. I got a good night's sleep the night before. I ate a big breakfast. I did yoga. I did everything that I could do and I still went completely numb. And after the first take, I was totally fine. And then we did it two or three more times and I was completely fine. But if I hadn't been that prepared, if I hadn't done yoga, if I hadn't made sure I had eaten before class, like if we hadn't rehearsed it and that happened, it would have been a complete shit show. Do you, so what happens when you're numb? Like, does, do other, can other people tell or are you able to hide it? And then later you're like, by the way, I couldn't feel my body. <laughs> I think it's, I mean, I feel like it's very visible because like my mouth, like, you know, like when your eye twitches, like that's my eye twitches. And then my mouth gets stuck like this, like, <laughs> because my face goes numb. Like it literally goes numb. So I think it's luckily the scene like started sitting down. So I just sat on my hands. So they didn't see that. And I was kind of like laughing a little. So I was able to like laugh. And so my mouth wasn't like, <laughs> but it's definitely, I feel like it's very visible, but there's nothing I can do about it besides like take a deep breath and like, push through but it was weird because as soon as I did one take it was like my subconscious mind and my body was like oh, okay like fight or flight's done you survived that we'll leave you alone now you're good and it's completely gone it's that like a fight so or flight awesome. defense I think I don't know what it is it's so bizarre and it used to happen to me every single time I had anything any audition anything now it only happens when I'm doing something really scary that I've never done before that's so did it give you this pause of, wait, I can't be an actor if my body's having this response? Like, did you ever have that freak out? Or were you always like, no, 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 this is what I'm doing, and this is a new problem that we're going to solve? Um, both. Like, at the, at the beginning, like, I, I never did high school plays or anything, because I would, like, literally go to the auditions, and that would happen to me, and I would just leave. And then I... In 10th grade, I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to actually do a play because my school, there was like eight kids in my grade, so there was no auditions. It was just like, you want to be in the play? You're in the play. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to be in the play. I don't have to audition. I won't get nervous. This is great. And then it was like a week out from opening night, and I started, like, I could feel it, and I was like, I can't do it. I'm not doing it. And I dropped out. Um, oh, no. <laughs> you dropped out. <laughs> but that was, once I started taking, like, acting classes and stuff, it would happen all the time. But I, I think there was a part of me that knew – like, okay, this is, this is happening because you're so scared and you just have to do it anyway, or just keep being scared. Like, and I knew this is what I wanted to do. So it was like either suck it up or give it up. 
and I didn't want to give it up. So I sucked it up. That's so fascinating that you were able to know that this was the thing you're going to do no matter what. So even though your body was having such a huge response, there was no way that like that was going to be, that was going to stop you. I know. It's awful. It's a really terrible feeling. But, but when I, when I'm done, like, I know we mentioned like talking about being fearless and like when I'm done after that specific workshop, I was like, I like, I was like, Oh, I was on a complete high for like two days. Like I was like, I can fucking do anything. I can do whatever I want. I'm the best actor in LA. Like, like I just felt like I could conquer the world. So I knew that like, if I could get past this, like it's going to feel so good. And it always does. And then it gives me, once I do something that's so scary like that, because that's why it happens, because I'm petrified, I feel so good after that it gives me so much more confidence, and that's another huge thing. Like, you, when you walk into an audition room, it's, it really is, like, 90% confidence. So, pushing through that, I knew, would give me the confidence to be better. So, it's scary. Stage fright sucks. And it happens to everyone. Like, I don't know if, have you, maybe, do you like Beyonce? Yeah, who doesn't like Beyonce? Stupid question. There's a video of her um, backstage going out before she goes out to perform one of her more recent performances. She's in, like, all gold, and, like, she's, like, dressed like a goddess with, like, the halo. And she's standing backstage, like, like, shitting herself. This is Beyonce. Like, she's been doing this forever. And, like, just to see that video of her, like, she was really, you could just see it in her that she was so nervous. And she's been doing this forever. Like, everybody gets nervous. So it's just, like, push through it. And then when you're out there on stage and when you're done, you're going to feel so good. Or let it hold you back. And, like, that being held back was an option. Like, I clinged onto that and did that for so long. And I was tired of it. So, you you're, you know, just, just do it. Just skip that whole part of wasting time and do it. Or you'd be like me and suffer for a while and get through it eventually. But it's better not to waste the time, right? <laughs> it's a good philosophy. <laughs> Easier said than done, of course. Yes. Um, so you actually led us perfectly into the, the hungry fours. Um, so that's something that's part of we're not starving is we're not starving, but we are hungry for various things. So what are you hungry for? Best tagline ever. Um, I'm hungry for creative growth. So what does that look like to you? What does that mean to you? Creative growth to me means, um, like, fulfillment, being fulfilled creatively. Um, it's kind of just, like, a longing to be better and to get over my fears. And it just means doing the stuff that scares me. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel like I get better, by, like, taking a new scary class or doing a workshop. Um, and it's terrifying, but I know I have to do it and put myself into those uncomfortable situations to get better and to grow creatively. Mm -hmm. And then, so that fearlessness is kind of like a byproduct, I guess, of, or creative growth is a byproduct of fearlessness, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> when you're fearless, and like when you're just willing to like go for it and do anything, I think that's when you grow creatively. Not just in acting, which is our, like, outlet, but as a person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wait, I lost my train of thought. It was so good, Bianca. You had me so with you. I lost my... my oh, next, I'm just babbling. My next question. Oh, that was it. You were talking about fulfillment. And you kind of... you essentially answered the question, but I'd love to hear if you have a little bit further, pushing that further, of, like what fulfillment would look like for you acting-wise? What fulfillment would look like for me acting-wise? And you can... My other question would be, what does success look like to you? So if that's two different things or if that's the same thing. Kind of a two for a question. Uh, pretty similar, but a little different. I think success for me, acting-wise, would be to not have a survival... Not have to have a survival job. Mm -hmm. Um... Something, like, really stupid for me is, like, I just would love to have my own house, like, to be able to buy my own house. Mm -hmm. Not a big one. <laughs> I just, like, for me, I don't know why, like, to me, maybe it's just, like, middle class ingrained in me, but I feel like if I just had my, if I was able to afford my own house, that would be like, oh my gosh, I made it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so success is definitely just be, I would just love to be working steadily enough and like being able to do what I really love and being able to like be financially comfortable doing it. Um, but fulfillment All those things would fulfill me, of course. But I think it's a little different because it's more, I don't want to, I don't want to have all those things and have what success is to me by doing jobs that are, that aren't fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Like roles that I don't like or like being stuck on, like, not that there's anything wrong with like soap operas or anything, but like I would never want to be like stuck doing like a show for like 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. and not growing creatively like I think that's just like I fulfillment to me is constantly trying to push myself and get better and all of that to get to the success my idea of success yeah that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. that's so interesting to hear the difference I think yeah because success can be one thing but I think having the fulfill a fulfilled path towards success is what will ultimately you know I think make you the happiest right that's do you have any, you mentioned you were watching or listening to podcasts. Do you have any podcast recommendations? I listen to the Oprah Winfrey Super Soul podcast every morning on my walk to work. Um, and that's a strong favorite because she talks to so many different people, so many different topics on just anything you can imagine. And um, I think every time she has them on the show because they wrote a book for the most part. Mm-hmm. So I like that I can listen to them talk about it and then there's like something else that I can go to if I really like what they're saying. Like I can go and buy their book. Mm -hmm. um, but I always listen to something inspirational on my walk to work and then while I'm like opening up the restaurant just to like keep me inspired and like make me a little less miserable that I'm there. <laughs> um, so that's a big one. Um, Ted, Ted Talk has some really, really cool ones and they're very scientific, which is I really like. So they talk about like breaking bad habits and just like things that are helpful in general. Um, Brene Brown or not Brene Brown. Um, Cheryl Strait, I think, uh, dear sugar is her podcast. It's really more focused on like how to be a good person. They kind of take letters in from like, uh, listeners and answer the questions. So I like that one a lot. Um, I know a lot of people talk about the, uh, they talk about it in class all the time. Something Jones, Sam Jones. Oh, he interviews. Yeah, I love that podcast. I listened to one of his and I thought it was with Christian Bell and it was so good. Um, but then I listened to a lot of comedy ones with my boyfriend, like Bill Burr, um, the Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan is his podcasts are nuts because he's like such an interesting person. Um, but I think all of that, all of that, like man, mind expanding stuff, like hearing all these different people who have weird careers are completely different point of views or messed up point of views sometimes like is helpful to us as actors for sure. Um, but yeah, I love podcasts, a book that I love. I don't know if you're going to get to that question, but I'm just jumping right ahead. Um, <laughs> big magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. When the book came out, she came out with a, um, a pot, like a 10 episode podcast to coincide with it. And it was, the book is amazing, but the podcasts were really, really great too. She talks a lot about how everybody has their own creative genius and which I just love. Like I just picture like a little, I have a little fairy just like right there. Um, and they want to work with you. They're not just going to come through you. Like you, they want to see that you're working before they come and help you. So that's kind of like what her whole book's about. It's really, it's really, really good. Highly recommend Oh, I love it. I'll have to check it out. So fake magic. Big magic. Big magic. Um, fake. It's real. It's real. Do you think um, serving and the the life of like hustling towards a dream? How has that kind of enhanced your acting through like the people that you meet or the experiences that you're having? Like, has that had an impact on you as an actress and your your craft? Um. Definitely. I grew up in in the restaurant business. My parents owned a restaurant. So constantly like having communication with people I think is really helpful. And then not only that, but we get like we deal with in food and beverage, like we deal with some crazy people. So just like those crazy stories and like being so angry and like having all these emotions but you're you know, you're 
food and beverage, so you can't really show that. I think it's, like, so good for your toolbox. Like, I just have all these stories that I could just think of and get pissed off. And then I'm like, all right, let's do the scene. Like, it is definitely really helpful. Um, but on the, the good end is not all the time because sometimes I just hate serving so much. But then there's sometimes when I go to work and, like, I just, like, try and love everybody which Oprah kind of talks about a lot. Like you just like look everybody in the eye and just like give them love. And so like, I'll try and do that when I'm having, like if I really don't want to be at work and I'll just really try and connect with every person. And those are like the best days. And I think it's helpful as an actor to like just connect with people and not really so much be vulnerable. We're not like, not like, what do you want to order? (laughs) But it's nice to like, talk to people and be like, Hey, how's your day? And like really mean it instead of be like, Hey guys, how are you? Like, what do you want? And I think that's really helpful as well. So that's a good thing Mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. I think, um, just meeting so many different types of people can be so valuable. You're, you're seeing little insights into lives that you otherwise wouldn't see. For sure. And I think, I think it's good that we have to like hustle a little bit. Like, I don't think, I think it builds character. Like I wouldn't be who I am if my parents didn't make me work in the restaurant when I, from like age 11 on, or like even now, like if I moved out here and my parents just like paid my rent and like gave me a car and, and you know, and I didn't have to like budget and like work hard and like worry about like debt and like paying bills and stuff. I don't know that necessarily like, would you work as hard? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that definitely does like build character to have a job that you really don't like. (laughs) To have to work on, on a, a day job when you've got your creative passion. <laughs> yeah. So do you have any advice? You've obviously given lots of advice throughout um, this, but do you have any specific advice you want to give for either uh, other actors or even just artists, anyone that wants to be or is on a similar path? Totally. Um, I would say have, like, surround yourself with people who have similar goals or who inspire you. Like, I have a friend from New Jersey, and DJ, he's a uh, musician. There we go. (laughs) Um, So, obviously, we don't have the same, like, passion, but we have the same drive, and, like, it's kind of similar. So, on Instagram, like, we'll just send each other, like, inspirational quotes, like, all day long. And do I read everyone he sends me? Like, no, not at all. But when I do, like, I'm like, okay, let me take a second and, like, digest this. Like, it changes my day. So I would definitely have some inspiration buddies or even just, like, friends like you who, like, ask these questions. Like, have someone that you can talk about these weird things, deep, like, things to talk about with. Like, I think that is really, really helpful because then you don't feel like you're so alone. Um, uh, a big thing for me also is having like goals. Uh, like when I was in New York, I, things were kind of slow for me and I'm like, I know, I knew I was moving out here soon and I'm like, what's something that I can do that's going to like keep me motivated even because I know I'm not going to be here a, lo- a while longer. Um, so I was like, let's audition for Juilliard. And that was like a big goal that kept me busy for like six months, like memorizing all those pieces and getting ready for that. And I didn't really want to get in. I didn't really care if I got in, but having a goal sometimes, whether you want it to be like to succeed or not, I think really keeps you on track. Um, and just follow your curiosity. Like so many of people I know, they're like, Oh, you're so lucky you have a passion and like you have stuff you're good at. And I'm like, I you, you do too. Like what's something that you love that you're really curious about? Like follow that and that there's a job for everything and that will lead you to your passion. And then of course, obviously like never give up. <laughs> like it sucks. it's it's hard to be out here. Sometimes it sucks. Like you're away from your family. You're away from your friends. You have no money. <laughs> like there, I see my cousins and friends and family at home and like they're living it up. They still live at home. They go out every weekend. Like they have a great time. They're able to save money. They have good jobs. Like they're able to buy their own cars. Like I have friends who are like settling down. They're probably going to get married soon. And it's like, you can't let that bother you because the path that you've chosen is going to fulfill you more than anything else. So even if you are jealous a little of those things, if you really had them and you gave this up, how would you really feel? So just try and stay motivated which is so hard. It's so hard for me too, but stay motivated and really like just don't give up and it'll happen if you stick it out longer. Oh, 
well, yay, that's such great advice. And I love, that's such a nice place to end on, is to find your fulfillment, keep going, and persevere, you know? You'll get there. We'll get there, Grace. We'll get there, as long We're as we all- persevere. Yeah. Keep going. We'll all get there. <laughs> Well, Bianca, I really appreciate you taking some time today to chat with me and share what keeps you inspired, to share some of your story. And I think um, you've shared so much valuable advice and planning and scheduling that I think is so useful for other people to snag some of your great ideas. I hope it's helpful. I wasn't just babbling the whole entire time. But thank you for having me. This is the highlight of my week. Oh, yay. Well, I'm Grace Gable. And I'm Bianca Castronobo. And this has been We're Not Starving. Bye, guys. Bye.